Lifinsegi, yeah, you remember him, the guy who got fired by Chiefs a few months ago? Now, he has come out again and talked about why it didn't work for him at Kaiser Chiefs. And the reasons that he gave make me go, I can see where you're coming from, but also you're speaking nonsense. What did he say? And why do I think a part of me thinks that it's just speaking nonsense? Well, let's talk about it. Now, he says that when it comes to Chiefs, it was more about what are the tactical requirements? What are the technical requirements? What are the individual qualities? And he was saying this at Power Sports Extra. And then he continues to say, you have a team that has too many players coming from other teams and you also look at their profile in terms of how they were played in those teams and how do you want to apply your game model okay let's break this thing down what he's saying number one he's saying that there are too many players coming in to Kaiser Chiefs right okay I understand that well if you're just gonna bring in 15 players or 10 players in one season it might be a bit tricky to work with those players right because we know chiefs essentially got a new center back pairing beginning of last season they got two midfielders who went in and became starters in imteto and castillo and up front they got to potane they got to ranga they got umodi as well so those are three and then to is the fourth so you look at this and then Dupree only had a year in under his belt at Chiefs. So really there are way too many moving parts at the time. So I can see where he's coming from and how that can be tricky. To which I then say, but bro, you were there as the technical director. Why did you not say to Zwane when he wanted all these players and when you were planning as the technical team because he was part of the technical team? Why did he not say, you know what, Zwane? This might be problematic to you because you are bringing in way too many players and this might cause a bit of disharmony if you will and if you bring in a lot of players some players will not get enough minutes and they will get frustrated and we don't want that but as part of the technical team he did not see a problem when they signed those players the second thing that i find a bit troubling is the fact that you are saying to me, the thing is, you also have to look at their profile in terms of how they were played in those teams. And this is one thing that always irks me, for a lack of a better term, when I think about Kaiser Chiefs transfer policy. Because they sign players who are playing a certain way and they bring them to Kaiser Chiefs and they play them a completely different way. And then I'm like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You have a, a person like Ox comes from Stellenbosch. He was playing as a single pivot there. You bring him to your Chiefs. Now he has to play alongside someone. So now, basically, for example, the responsibility to cover ground and to clean up is now divided between him and Mart or him and Castillo. And as much as players need to adapt as well, but also you are signing a player because you are seeing a specific thing that's missing in your team. But then you sign him for that reason, which is going to be a sweeper at Chiefs or kind of a cleanup person protecting the defense. And now you giving him a different role. Ah, you know what? Now we want you to attack. Now we want you to be creative. How? But the reason we signed this player was for him to do this. So it makes me then question the thing. Why sign players that you don't need? We've been complaining, Uguti. Chiefs have been signing a lot of midfielders or a lot of wingers or a lot of this and a lot of that. But you look at them, they still don't have a left back. They still don't have a another creative number 10 who's really good and can make a, a, and, and, and do really good, a good job in midfield. They've not done that. So then the question is, why do they keep on signing players and then converting them into something that they realize when the player gets their wood? Oh, actually, we don't need a single pivot as a six who are playing a double pivot then don't sign a player who's going to have to come to Chiefs and get used to a system and I know people would say Fela Rome wasn't built in a day but I will also say this remember Uguti Kaiser Chiefs fans are very impatient and they're not gonna tolerate someone who's coming to Chiefs and wants to be given time so if you're bringing Numteto from Stellenbosch playing as a single pivot six Mlandele Gui Chiefs as a single pivot E6 Mosuk Fikum Shinchi and also, 
I hear all of these things that it talks about. Tuguti, you bring in players, individuals, there are way too many, blah, 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 blah. I am sitting here and thinking, this man did not only have a preseason, a full preseason. Ne? He had a full preseason with the team, but on top of having that full preseason, he still had a lot of games that he played. I think he played 13, if I'm not mistaken, and got knocked out of two cups. You're telling me that in all those months, August, September, October, November, yeah, it was two or three months, or three, four months, if you're counting what you like for a preseason. All of the time when you can't figure out Uguti, the strength of the strengths of the players that I have. For one, Uranga was a box striker at the other team that he came from, Baroka. Play him as a number nine. Play him as a box striker. Umodi was playing as a winger. Play him as a winger. Ucastillo came from South America playing either as a six or an eight. Play him as an eight. Simple as that. Castillo was playing centrally in his team in South America. Play him centrally. Not to go to Manjusuzo Mtatu Muntu, S.A. Colombia or Venezuela. On the, so as an eight when Sumja as a winger. What nonsense is that? Urang Agatejala is a box striker on Sufuna drop into midfield. There is obviously going to be frustration. There is obviously going to be a lot of players who are going to underperform because you are changing them. If Umodi a prefer Ukstata wide and receive the ball there and start dribbling people, let him do that. If Uzomjali Sakma have spaces Ubon would are effective in those positions, then Uzobani King. Even if you look at Modi, the, the, the most that has been dangerous this season, he makes a run from white and then he goes inwards and then he starts causing damage. But if you are making him start in the middle, like closer to, to the middle and playing him in a half space, then sometimes it disappears in the game and then you don't see what he actually does and people buzz up to Nesabeti, Uyunkomo. But you see, he's our top goal scorer, all paid with four goals, but also with assists is also providing. So clearly there is a player there. You have Abanya Badali, a lot of other players that Chiefs has. Abu Kunik, Kunik as a centre back, Bamdalsa as a right back. Yet we have other players who are playing in those positions. Solomon's, Frosla getting benched. And then you look at Chiefs and you realize that actually this thing did not just end with Unsegi. Calvin Johnson is still doing the same thing. He knows that Abu Kunik are not right backs, but that's exactly why he's playing them. He knows Uguti. Uh, 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 Uranga, what type of striker he is? He's not playing him there. And then they bench these players in and out of the team. There is no consistency. But then again, it brings about a few questions. Uguti, number one, as a technical director, he could have done something about the players that were signed before he was even signed as a coach. Number two, we have a scouting problem. I think we know this. We've talked about this. I think what Kezam Taung or, or even Uche Sika said, Kezam Taung, Ta I mean, he said that we'll look at what is available. So to me, it doesn't seem like each chiefs address the need that they have, but they look at the players who they can afford. So they get players who are available. That's why we sign so many free agents. Instead of signing players and saying, you know what, we need a left back. Let's go and best the best left get the best left back we can get. But instead they were like, who's available? Oh wait, look, Upotane, his contract has just ended with Celtic. Uh, we would rally him. Let's go get him. I'm not saying they shouldn't have signed Upotane, but I'm making an example that there wasn't a move they were looking to make. But then the moment he left Rally M, they were like, he's available. Let's get him. I have a lot of other examples, other players that we can talk about who are running out of contract with their teams. And then Chiefs ended up pouncing. Look at what happened with Ustel. He was playing a lot under Atazwane. But then again, you ask yourself, why did they really sign him? They signed him because his contract was entering the last six months of his contract. They used him and then they got rid of him again. He's sitting on the bench the whole season. So it's all of this thing about availability and not necessarily about are we actually addressing the problem that we have. Right now, Chiefs are in Nguyen Ukambiul and Omunyu number six. Yet on some girls one but actually pension. I know you can be Ireland another winger yet on the left or even on the right you side if both and you can play to pre there. Ngapa on the left you have Modi you can play him to Shabalala even if Villagas can play in that position. Utona Yansin is there. Banding about Ali Bakon, but that's what pin a footy by Otenga another winger. Why? Because that winger would be available instead of saying 
we need a 10, we need a 6, uh, not a 6, we need a 10, and we also need a number 9. Finish. 40, not just any number 9. A number 9 who's going to do what we want him to do. Right now, they want the number 9 to drop into midfield, so sign that profile of a player. Don't go out and sign another tall striker who wants to stay in the box and head the ball in. But now go to Abazoti, huh? We really don't care. Let's just get a striker who's available which then becomes problematic. Don't go out and get a quick striker because what do, why do we need another striker who's going to run? We already have people who are running about to pray and they are not always as effective because some teams sit deep and then there are no spaces. Look at the goals that we scored against Pirates. There were some spaces that Utupri could exploit. Look at every game that Utupri usually scores in. If he has space, he's going to score because he pays Yaki on Sebenzela as well. But if there is no space, then it becomes problematic as a number nine playing central. He's better playing wide in those cases because then he can dribble past people and running with the ball out wide. But through the middle, it's usually congested. It doesn't get a chance to affect the game as much as he would want to do. So I would go back and say that each of what they need to do, they need to also address their scouting problem. And I feel like Kunze, as much as he might have a point and have a scouting problem at Chiefs, but I just think that it was a mistake for him to be appointed at Chiefs because you're going to keep on talking about technical and tactical uh, cohesion and whatnot. The point is he failed because he couldn't get to use the best quality players that he had in his hands. But instead he just thought, oh man, how, how am I going to teach them drills? How are they going to become better players? You figure it out. Can't, what are these coaching certificates that you have for? Do you think Kunzaki has a valid point? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, remember, equals Alpelumoy.